Hi, I'm Pam Fox at pamfox.org, and in today's video, I'm going to be explaining why, um, anatomically speaking, we can have chronic belching. Um, so, uh, one of the very um, undiagnosed or just misunderstood um, conditions when it is related to chronic belching is hiatal hernia. And so oftentimes people go undiagnosed or they get a diagnosis and their doctor tells you, um, you know, it shouldn't cause you any problems and it certainly shouldn't cause, um, it's probably not the reason you're having chronic belching, when in fact it is the reason. And so in this video I want to just try to um, explain, anatomically speaking, why we have this chronic belching. And so, um, in my case, when I had chronic belching before I reversed my hiatal hernia, it was what I describe as being maddening and inescapable. And I say that because for me, and I know this isn't the case for everybody, but for me, the belching was, it was just that. It was inescapable. It was all the time. It didn't matter what I did, what I ate, what therapies or treatments, how I repositioned myself. I just really really had a hard time finding any relief from the chronic belching and I felt uncomfortable and nauseous all the time. Um, so this really pushed me to find um, a natural um, treatment for this that would fix the condition. I didn't just want to manage it with a pill. I didn't just want to, you know, get by the best I could with this condition that my doctor told me that I now had. I wanted it to go away. Because I knew that if I, could, if, the, if I could make the condition go away, I would make the symptoms go away. At least that was my hope. And so, um, and so basically I set out to do that. And one of the things that I learned was all about Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law is basically, it says that in an enclosed container, when, there, when, there is, when the volume is high, the pressure is low, and vice versa. Vice versa. When the volume is low, the pressure is high. And so you have to remember that um, for this lesson today. And I'm going to begin by drawing a picture of a person. And um, I'm going to draw two cavities. The The uh, chest or thoracic cavity up top, and we'll start with that. So, <laughs> so here's the lungs. Here's the windpipe coming down to the lungs, and this little guy right here is your diaphragm. So the diaphragm is the muscle that separates the upper cavity, which is the chest cavity, from the lower cavity down here, which is the abdominal cavity. And so then you also have your esophagus. Your esophagus that comes down along your windpipe all the way down through your diaphragm through a hole known as the hiatus and into the stomach. Are we having difficulties? I may, need, I may need to start over. It looks like it's okay now. Okay, so I'm gonna go on. So the esophagus comes down through the hiatus and connects to the stomach, okay? And so this is, um, this is what we want. We want the stomach underneath the diaphragm. Interesting, it says I have a really good connection, but it's also saying that it's not connecting. Hey, give me just one second. Okay, looks all right on this end. So, 
Um, so this is what we want, of course. So then in the case of hiatal hernia, then a portion of the stomach pushes through the hiatus and up into the chest cavity. All right, so this little circle right here is a little bit of your stomach pushed up through the diaphragm and into the chest cavity. So this is, this is what's important to understand. So um, I was talking about Boyle's Law where there is increased volume, there is decreased pressure, where there is, and then the vice, vice versa is true. So I'm gonna back up just a moment. We're gonna come back up into the chest cavity and we're gonna talk about the lungs. So here, in the chest cavity, I've just circled the chest cavity, we have a space, an enclosed space. We have the lungs and the heart is in there, of course, and um, the diaphragm. So when your diaphragm, when you breathe in, when you breathe in, your diaphragm does what? It moves down. When you breathe in, your diaphragm moves down. And when your diaphragm moves down, the space or the volume increases in your chest cavity, okay? And so again, what does that mean? It means that the, the volume increases so the pressure decreases. And so when this happens, the air can freely throw, flow through the windpipe and into the lungs and fill the lungs, okay? So that's your inhale. Now on the exhale, the diaphragm moves up. The diaphragm moves up. And so what happens then is the space in this cavity or the volume decreases, which means the pressure increases. So the pressure increases within this cavity and it pushes on, the pressure in the cavity goes up, it's high pressure. And so then the lungs deflate of air and the air flows back out, okay? And so when we talk about hiatal hernia now, this little guy right here, this little guy is now, um, it is now, it, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It is now victim <laughs> to the Boyle's law, to the same pressures and laws that apply to, to respiration. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that as we breathe in and the diaphragm moves down and space is increased up here, um, that the, the pressure decreases and the vice versa is true. Um, as, the, as the diaphragm moves up, the space or the volume decreases, which means we have increased pressure within this cavity on this little guy right here. And so what does that mean for belching? Well, when we breathe in, the air flows freely in and out, breathing in and out through the windpipe, but we also can um, swallow a little bit of air just when we swallow, when we eat, when we drink, when we laugh. The air can come down through the esophagus. This is normal. And so in the case of a normal, healthy, um, one-time belch um, without a hiatal hernia, the, the lower esophageal sphincter or the valve that connects the esophagus to the stomach, its job is to, to open up and release um, any trapped air bubbles or buildup or excess of air. I'm gonna draw that over here. So on this side, we just have a diaphragm and a stomach, a healthy stomach that's below the diaphragm. So if you have a buildup of air, some trapped air bubbles in here, the lower esophageal sphincter will, the body will communicate that to this valve and it will do what? It will relax and it will release that air in the form of a belch, okay? So now, um, going back to the hiatal hernia, We have a little bit of our stomach up here in the chest cavity and the lower esophageal sphincter is up here again where the esophagus meets the stomach and so um, and so this little guy right here is very different than you know a great big stomach that has a little bit of air bubbles in it and so if you have just a little bit of air trapped in here with, with every breath or with every swallow, just a little bit of air in this tiny little space. And now all of this added pressure from, again, from Boyle's Law, this little valve is going to, again, the body is gonna to communicate to that valve to open up and release that pressure over and over again um, as, the, as the air gets trapped in this little guy up here, okay? 
So that's Boyle's law, but we also have to take into account that your, your, the portion of your stomach is up here in the chest cavity, which means there's also um, possible additional pressure on this valve um, because the stomach is now pushing against either the lungs or the heart or the aorta. It just depends on how your hiatal hernia sits. Okay, and then another thing that can happen is people can have the, the um, desire or need to belch all the time, but they can't burp. They can't burp. And so what can be happening there is, is there can be pressure on this valve and not necessarily any air trapped in this little guy right here. But the body will still communicate to that valve to open up and force you to, or make you feel like you need to burp, even though there's no air trapped in here, just because of the pressures that are being put on that valve. Okay? So I hope this makes sense, and I hope you can clearly see that, the first of all, that by understanding why we're belching, we can begin to see how we can overcome the symptom, and that is to move the stomach down and out of this herniated position. We've got to get the stomach to move down, right? So we can unherniate. We can move the stomach down, we can eliminate the symptoms, right? That's why they would that's why we even have surgical repairs of hiatal hernia. We've got to get that stomach down to eliminate the symptoms. And this this is something um, that we can do on our own. This is something that that I did personally. I learned how to do it myself. I learned how to master moving my stomach down and I learned how to strengthen my diaphragm, strengthen the diaphragm here and this hiatus, tighten it up so that I couldn't re-herniate, okay? So, so I hope that makes sense and I hope you can clearly see that the answer to overcoming your symptoms of chronic belching is to unherniate your stomach, is to move your stomach down. And one other thing I wanna mention is your diaphragm, when we breathe, the diaphragm moves up and down. When the diaphragm moves down, okay, it creates, so we have down here, we have the abdominal cavity. When the diaphragm moves down, it creates low volume and, low volume and high pressure in the stomach. But the body is very smart and it knows how to accommodate for that. And what it's supposed to do is the abdominal muscles. So here your abdominal wall would be covering um, your intestinal tract. As the diaphragm moves down and creates crowding within the abdominal cavity, the, the muscles themselves are supposed to stretch and move outward. All right. So in other words, I'm going to stand up and, and demonstrate this. Um, so when I breathe in, the lungs inflate, the diaphragm moves down, we create a, um, a low volume, high pressure situation here, but the, the muscles are supposed to expand outward to give room for that overcrowding in the abdominal cavity. But unfortunately, um, we forget how to breathe into our bellies as we age. It's something we do naturally when we're children and as we get older and older, especially if we become more sedentary or if we're always pulling in our abdominal muscles, if we've kind of trained ourselves to always be standing up straight and sucking in our gut, then we become shallow chest breathers, which means our belly never has that chance to expand the way it's supposed to every time we take a breath, which is really, really important because it gives those organs room every time we breathe to not be so crowded and, um, and this is in and of itself, you know, pulling in those stomach muscles all the time puts pressure on the stomach and it, and it can push it up. It can push it up. Remember, we want our stomach to come down. But if something's always pushing your stomach up, that's always going to support that hiatal hernia and not give your, chance, your stomach a chance to move down. Oh my gosh. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so guys, if you like this content, make sure you like my Facebook page. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. You can follow me. You can subscribe over at my YouTube channel and you can always check out and learn more information about my course, Reversing Hiatal Hernia Naturally at my website, pamfox.org. Thanks for watching.